Hi everyone, Radhe Radhe. In this video, we're going to be talking about standards and how to shift out of, how to raise our standards so that we live a life better than we are imagining. So Tony Robbins talks about standards a lot. Everybody, basically, anybody who's who knows, who understands personal growth stuff will talk about identities, limiting belief standards. So we live our lives based on what we think we deserve or what our standard is for ourselves, not uh, based on what uh, our capabilities or capacities or anything like that. It's basically simply based on what we believe we are capable of or uh, yeah, what, what, what our identity is, what our standards are. So whatever standard we have, we will not usually allow ourselves to go below it, you know. We will we will stay there. We will somehow find a way to make it work so that we stay there. But uh, and and there might be dips and and whatever. But as soon as there is a dip, we'll bring ourselves back up. But then as soon as we start going up, we will bring ourselves back down. So we will just maintain that equilibrium of where we believe our standards to, to are until we raise our standards. So the question is, how do we raise those standards, right? How do we get to a, I mean, because this is what I believe about, this is what I fundamentally believe about myself. So I'm going to give a very simple example about sugar, right? There were two years, two whole years where I didn't eat sugar the entire year. And it's not that I wouldn't eat, like if there was something, if there was food, if I went to a restaurant, for example, Thai restaurants, they will always add sugar to it or often add sugar to it. I would eat that. But uh, if there was like, I wouldn't eat cakes or cupcakes or donuts or, you know, sugar things like that. Or I wouldn't even drink too much. I mean, I wouldn't even drink sugar things like that. Like I wouldn't have mango lassi because that had a lot of sugar. So any sugary drink or sugary food I wouldn't have. And two years, two whole years, I, the, I had one cheat day, December 31, I would eat sugar as much as I wanted. And then the rest of the year, I wouldn't. And it was so easy. And I made that decision like December 31, one night, that from next from tomorrow onwards, I'm not going to do it. And that's it. It was so easy. It wasn't difficult for me. It just happened just like that. It just happened. And then two years later, somehow I just found myself eating a day. I didn't eat for, I think, nine days in January, nine, January 10 or something. Um, I started eating. I ate. And then I ate and then I ate. And it's been many, three years, four years or something since then. And I have been eating. So my belief system at that time was that I could do it. And I just gave up, gave it up. And I wasn't, I didn't get the results I wanted. I suppose I was looking for results. And that is another thing. When you are looking for results, you're not going to be able to maintain it, right? Because it's, it, it doesn't work like that. You're going to lose heart. You're going to be disappointed. And disappointment is like our biggest thing. We will do everything so to not be disappointed, including make bad, bad decisions that become disappointed anyways, because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't help. So if I had just managed to be okay with the disappointment, like I, I am the person who does not eat sugar. That's it. I just don't. I eat sugar only on December 31. And that too, I didn't even enjoy it too much on December 31. You know, it's such a mental game. It's such a mental game. But now I'm eating it again. So, but that was my standard. I am the person. And why? Because sugar is poison. There is nothing good in sugar. Absolutely nothing good in sugar. Right? It is just feeding our taste buds and it is just, it's just uh, empty enjoyment, like momentary enjoyment. The, the tongue is happy for like that split moment and that's it. It's over. It's gone. It's so ridiculous when you think about it, when you actively intellectually think about it. It's just, what are you doing with your life? You know, that kind of thing. I'm saying that to myself because I need to not eat sugar, especially because I need to not eat sugar. Um, because of my health issues, but I'm doing it. Why? Because it doesn't work anyways. If I don't eat sugar, my numbers don't go down. It doesn't matter, right? It does matter. Of course it matters. Sugar is not good for me. It's pure poison. So what do we do to raise our standards? So my belief right now is that I'm too weak to do it. <laughs> I'm too weak to give up sugar. I see sugar and I crave it and I eat it. That's my belief about myself now. That's my identity. I am the person who's too weak to resist sugar. I am. And not I believe, but I am the person. I am a weak person who cannot resist sugar. That's my identity at the moment. It wasn't that identity. For two whole years, it wasn't like that. But right now, it is like that. How do I change that? How do we change? How do you change out of this identity that you have? I am this person. 
who can not achieve this or who cannot do this, whatever. How can you shift out of that? That's the question, right? The first thing is brutal honesty. What is the reason that you have this identity? What is the fear? What is the underlying fear? For me, it was that, yeah, the results don't come. The results that I'm wanting don't come. What if I give up those results? Because eating sugar is not going to give me those results. I know that. Fundamentally, I know that it's eating sugar is not going to give me the results I want. So, what is it that uh, um, I, okay, and what do I believe? About? I know that I can do it. I've done it, right? So, me saying I can't do it, that's bullshit. I mean, that's, that's just not true. I mean, I know I can do it. So, same with you. You have done difficult things, right? You can think of many, many, probably you can list down 10 different things that you've done that are very, very difficult. Even if you can list down one very difficult thing that you've done, very, very difficult thing that you've done in your life, right? If you can do that, you can do whatever this is, that this new thing is that you want to do or old thing <laughs> that you've been wanting to do for a long time, but you've not managed to do. So the way we shift out of it is, first of all, understand what is the fear? What is the belief? I am, I am a weak person. What is the identity? What is the limiting identity? I am an emotionally weak person. I am a physically weak person. I am whatever. I am lazy, I am not hardworking, I am whatever I, whatever I am, and then the negative thing. To list down those limiting beliefs. And then figure out which, uh, limiting identities, I mean. And then figure out which one you want to work on. And you, you just say, okay, this is no longer me. And then you raise your standards. This is not, I no longer, and you don't have to identify exactly, you can't, you it's probably better not to do that even to say, ki, okay, I, um, I I am a very healthy person. Like You don't know that. I mean, you don't know that you will become. That's going for results. You don't want to put results. Like affirmations, they're, they're great. And we can have different kinds of affirmations where we say, I can do difficult things. I can overcome things. I don't know what is going to happen about this particular thing. I don't know if this particular thing I'm going to overcome in this particular way that I want to. I don't know that. But I know that I can overcome things. And then how do you make that? How do you shift that standard? Because if this is your identity, this is your belief system about yourself right now, how do you raise it? How do you actually shift out of that? By reminding yourself, by using your mind as a friend instead of an enemy, by feeding a good dog instead of a bad dog. And every time you start to think of the bad thing, you shift your mind to saying, I can do it. You think about this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, relentlessly. Your mind will keep going back there and you just keep doing it and it'll keep going back there. And it doesn't matter if it takes years, you just keep doing it relentlessly. You shift your mind. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. You put post-it notes everywhere. You laminate and put it in your wallet. You you print out a laminate or whatever. You put, you put flowery calligraphy. You, you, you associate with that. You put your entire energy around that. You put your entire focus on that. Not entire, because there are other things that you're focusing on. You put a lot of focus on that. And you, you raise yourself, you raise your vibration by keeping on affirming to yourself, I can do this. The affirmation is not that I am a perfectly healthy person, if you're not. The affirmation is that I, I am capable of leading a life that can lead me to health. That's what's in your control. What is in your control? Not that you're going to have perfect health. That's not in your control. What is in your control is that you can stop having sugar or whatever it is that you're doing. You can stop emotional eating or you can stop whatever it is that you do, whatever uh, thing that you want to stop doing or start doing or whatever. Right. I can wake up at so and so time in the morning and, and do this morning routine that I want to. I can do this. So the first step is not to actually do it and then beat yourself up because you didn't manage to do it. The first step is to repeat to yourself over and over again, I can do it. And then automatically you will feel yourself getting motivated and doing it and starting it and finding ideas, thinking of ideas. You will get, you will get the, the your, um, your God will put those ideas into your head. I'm not able to, my hand isn't showing, I'm trying to get my hand to show. God will put those ideas into your head automatically. 
you will start to feel that motivation but that motivation when when your mindset is right no 99% is the mindset and 1% is the um, actual action and the action is crucial it's absolutely crucial but you can just bulldoze willpower your way through it or you can use your mind as a friend and make it easier for the action to happen it'll be aligned action but it'll be aligned action because your mind is just constantly thinking about that yes i can do it 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 and then automatically ideas will come and then it will be easier to do also it will not feel like you're pushing against the grain to do it like pushing against a boulder up a hill or something to do it it'll just it'll just be much easier to do very difficult things okay yeah that's it for this video um wish you a day filled with breakthroughs in your identities radhe radhe